for this exercise, there are two strategies that both work. We will discuss both of them in this video. But why don't you try to solve the problem yourself first and see afterwards whether you did it correctly. So we want to solve the problem cosine z equals minus i, uh, and we want to know the values of z. We want to write them in the form z equals a plus b times i, where a and b are both in r. Now we can have two strategies. Uh, the first one is that we set uh, cosine z equals one half e to the power i z plus e to the power minus i z, and then we set e to the power i z equals p. That's the first strategy. The second strategy, we can also rewrite the cosine of z in terms of the cosine of x and the uh, cosine hyperbolic, etc., and then continue. So uh, you can uh, choose whatever your st uh, whatever strategy you like best. Now let's think first a bit. How many solutions do you think you'll get in the end? Let's see. Uh, so we start at cosine z equals one half e to the power i z plus e to the power minus i z equals minus i, and then one of the strategies put e to the power i z equals p. And if we substitute this and bring the one half to the other side, you get the minus two i on the right hand side. You get p plus one half p equals uh, minus two i. And you can solve for p in the next step, multiplying with p, you get p squared plus one equals minus 2i times p, bring the minus 2i p to the other side, and then you are over here. And then you can use your favorite method uh, to solve this quadratic equation by completing the square or ABC formula works as well. And you get those two solutions for p. Now, next step. Uh, we, uh, we now know what p is, but we still have to solve for z. Let's take the plus sign first, then we get e to the power i z equals minus i times 1 plus the square root of 2. Now we can rewrite e to the power, uh, uh, the minus i as uh, e to the power minus i times pi over 2 in polar form. And we can also write 1 plus square root of 2 as an exponential, namely as e to the power ln 1 plus square root of 2. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, now you have on the left-hand side an exponential, and on the right-hand side you have an exponential as well. I you know uh, e to the power a equals e to the power b, b if and only if a equals b plus a multiple of 2 pi i. So that's what we use. Uh, exponential on the left, i z, equals exponential on the right, plus some multiple of 2 pi i, where k is in z. And now you can solve for z easily, divide by i, and then you are over here. Now, if only done the plus sign for the p plus, you can also do the minus sign. It's exactly the same way, and you get those solutions over here. So you conclude z is either this one or that one. And then you have your uh, solutions for z. Suppose now you left out the factor 2 pi i. How many solutions would you have gotten? Would you have noticed something? Well, if you would have forgotten the 2 pi i over here, you would have gotten either one or two solutions, depends whether you had forgotten the p plus or p minus as well. And then you know there's something wrong, because right at the start of the exercise, hopefully, you answered that you would obtain an infinite number of uh, solutions. So always start your exercises with think a bit of how many solutions you expect or what kind of uh, solutions you expect. And then if you are at the end, if you have computed your solutions, see whether that indeed uh, matches uh, the number of solutions you expected. Now let's go uh, swiftly through the essential steps. So what do you have to do for this first method? Well, first step is set uh, p equals e to the power i z and solve for p. That's the first part. Second part, uh, you have to solve for z. At a certain point, you uh, get somewhere e to the power i z equals e to the power alpha, and there you use something, namely that i z equals alpha plus a multiple of 2 pi i, where k is in z. And third, uh, do not forget this 
factor and do not forget it. K is in Z. Those are the essential steps in the first strategy. Now we will move on to the second strategy for the same exercise. So, what can you do? Well, you can rewrite your cosine Z first. So, what do you have for your cosine of Z? You have e to the power i, x plus i, y, e to the power minus i times x plus i, y. So, you set Z equals x plus i, y. And then you uh, rewrite and rewrite. You use Euler's formula. So, there are some steps over here uh, which you can do yourself. And then you get over here. And then you recognize that you have a cosine x times a cosine hyperbolic of y, and the other part is minus sine of x sine hyperbolic y equals minus i. And then you compare uh, left hand side and right hand side. Uh, you see the real part on the left hand side has to be equal to the real part of the right hand side, and the imaginary part of the left hand side has to be equal to the imaginary part of the right hand side. So comparing real parts, first you see cos x cos ha, uh, cosine hyperbolic y equals zero. And uh, comparing imaginary parts, you get sine x sine hyperbolic y equals one. So you have to solve two nonlinear equations. They have to hold both. So start with the easiest one first, which is obviously this one, because it's zero. So what do you get? Well, even better, your cosine hyperbolic of y is bigger or equal than one, so it's never zero. So if this product has to be equal to zero, then the cosine of x has to be equal to zero. Ah, that's really nice because that's easy to solve. Then you have either x equals pi over 2 plus a multiple of 2 pi, or x equals minus pi over 2 plus a multiple of 2 pi. Our case in z again. Now, let's pick the uh, first one first. Uh, if x equals plus pi over 2, then you uh, know the sine of x equals 1. Moving on to the imaginary parts. You know that the sine hyperbolic of y equals 1, so you have to solve uh, this equation over here. Well, you can do that in a similar way as we did in strategy 1. Set e to the power y equals p. Then you get a quadratic equation of for p over there. Uh, solving the quadratic equation yields two solutions, of course, over there and over there. And then you see that this one does not give any solutions because this p is negative. And now our y is real, so e to the power y is positive. So we only have solutions for this one, which gives you a value for p. Uh, so you uh, also know your uh, uh, you also know your z over here. And uh, for 3b, for the other one, you do similar steps, and you also get your z over there. And there you have your solution. So you see strategy. 2 works as well, you also get uh, your solution z, uh, and they are the same, of course, as the solutions from strategy 1, you can check that, uh, but you need to take some more steps, but whatever you like best. So what are the essential steps here? Uh, you rewrite your cosine of z in terms of cosine of x, etc. So this requires some steps, don't forget to, to, uh, to do all steps. Then you have to split in real and imaginary part. Uh, so easiest is to solve the real part first. Then for the imaginary part, you have to set, uh, solve for y. So for example, set e to the power y equals p. And then you have to wrap up your con to conclude. And also here, do not forget the additional factor k times 2 pi, where k is in z.